Hi guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to another video tutorial on creating an ASP.NET Core 2.2 web API application with Angular 7 front end. In the last video tutorial, we completed coding our login method. Now we want to go ahead and test our registration and login method. Since we don't have a user interface which contains a registration form or a login form for us to test our methods, we are going to make use of an application called Postman. Postman is an application that can be used to test your API methods. You can also use Fiddler or Swagger depending upon your choice. Since I am using Postman, so I will be testing my APIs on Postman application. But once again, you can download either one of these applications or you can download any other application which is capable of testing your API methods. Now, if you have downloaded Postman, you should see an interface something like this, which will have options to enter the URL of your methods and the different HTTP protocols. So now we will use these, this interface here to test our methods and to check what response we get. But before we go ahead and test the method, it is very important to make sure that few things are up and running. First and foremost is your server. So open Kitematic and make sure your server is running. So start your SQL server. So when we make request to the server, we should not get any errors. Second, also make sure that you log into Azure Data Studio because we want to check when we create a new user if the information is added to the database table. Other than that, we would not need anything else at the moment to test our web APIs. So let's go ahead and open Postman and start testing our web API methods. We will first register a user and then we will log in that user with the credentials that we used to register the user. So let's go ahead and do that. So now we have our Postman application running. Now we will test our API since we are going to test our HTTP POST method. Let's change this to POST. Also, you don't need to do this, but in case if you get an SSL certificate error and you are not able to run the API, not able to send a request, all you have to do is go to settings and then where you see this option SSL certificate verification you can turn this to on or turn this to off so you don't have to do it but if you get an error then you just switch it on or off okay so now let's go ahead and the next thing is to run our application so let's run our application So application is running. Let's minimize this. So in our application, we just need to copy this URL. That's the port that application is running on. So go back to Postman and copy paste it over here. And then in order to call our action method, which is the register, we have to call it by API forward slash the controller's name, which is account forward slash the actions name. So let's go ahead and open our method here so say api forward slash controller is account and the method name is register also now what we want to do is specify the parameters for this uh, registration which is in our registration model we say we need an email username and we need a password so go ahead to postman and then first thing we want to go to header set the content uh, you don't have to actually set the content type here because it will automatically set it to JSON. But it's good to do that. Then go to body and go to the option raw. And since we are sending the information from body, we have to choose body. Oh, and then 
we would want to paste our we would want to send the details that we need to register our users so the details that we need to send would be sent is as an array which will contain an email a username and a password and for the password make sure that you meet the criteria that you have set for the password in your startup dot cs file where we mentioned what options we need which is digit length alphanumeric uppercase lowercase so as you see i have set that options here so i've set my password as test underscore one now let's go ahead and send this request i am getting an error because for not found that means it's not able to detect my web api what is the issue let me just click a breakpoint over here and let me just hit again so yeah so it's not being called ah, so here the action i just need to put a square bracket put this action inside square bracket like this that's the way you will set the action inside square bracket as you see the controller I missed that and the error was not caught there was no squiggly line here indicating the error so I can just run this application again Click the browser make sure you fix that so you don't get the same error now the application should be running fine and let me just go ahead and open postman and now let's make this request and now we hit the breakpoint here and let me go and hover over your home data let's see what values we received so these values are now binded into this register view model as you see the email is set to the email we supplied the password to the password and the username to the username let's go ahead and just continue this method and now if you go back to postman we received a message saying registration was successful this is basically the message that we sent along with the email the status and the username so if you go back we will receive this information back with an OK response of 200. Now we also want to make sure that the information has been updated in our database. So open Azure Data Studio, go to your database table, refresh it. And now what we want to do is run the query on our ASP.NET user. So just right click edit data and we should see tech howdy there. That's it. So have take out the email shows zero because it's not yet confirmed and we will write the code to do that in the upcoming video tutorial but for now we are testing our apis so now let's go ahead and try to log in this user with this username and password that we created so let's do that so to test the login feature we'll open a new tab we'll copy this link We'll paste it here. We'll change this to post and we'll change the method name to login. Also, we go back here and we set a breakpoint on our login method just to validate what values we get and then go back to Postman API. Now, let's go back here. When we are logging in into this application, all we need as per our login view model is a username and a password so let's open our api go back here and copy these details and let's go back to our login method go to our headers set the content type to application json go to body go to raw and add the options here since we don't need the email we just need the username and password i'll leave it here as it is now we can hit the send button and when we hit the send button the request will be made to log into our application and here as our login method if everything is fine we should receive a token a expiration time for the token 
we should also receive a username and the user's role. Since we know the user's role is customer because the default role of the user is customer when he register a new user. So let's go ahead and test that. Let's click send. We set a breakpoint. So the breakpoint is hit. Now let's check what data we receive by hovering over this form data object. Now we receive the password and we received a username. Now let's go ahead and run this method. Continue running this method. Now the method is run. Now let's go up here. And as you see that it was a success. We received a 200 OK response. We received a token. This is a JWT token that we received. This is the expiration time of the token. This is the username. And the role of the user is customer. It sent back the role of the user. Now we have successfully created a token based login system. We have also created a registration method. Now what we want to do is you can also go to uh, the JWT.io website and validate this token. I mean you can decode this token and you can see what options you get. You can do that on your own. I'm not going to do that here. So um, we know that we have now received a token and we can now use this token to authenticate our user when he's requesting any views in our application. So that's it for this video tutorial guys. In the next video tutorial, we will start working on our product controller where we will create the methods to add and to edit and to delete products because we will be needing that when we code our front end in our Angular. We would have that CRUD functionality implemented and we would need APIs for that. So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe my channel to Tech Howdy.